Hello! Thanks for following our seminar for professionals of English at UNED. My name is Romy Acuña and I'm the head of the major in teaching English for primary school. Uh, today, for this session, we invited David Villalobos Betancourt, professor at Universidad Nacional and content consultant at Universidad Nacional, eh, Universidad Estatal a Distancia. Uh, David, thanks for sharing with us today. Well, thank you for having me here. Uh, today, David is going to talk about the relevance of special education for English teaching. David, how has the subject of learning accommodations been adequately addressed by our educational system in public and private institutions? Well, in Costa Rica, many efforts have been done ever since uh, 1939 with uh, teachers in Tenowil coming back from Europe and starting uh, programs in the area of special education to help children with disabilities. And throughout history, there are many more efforts, and including the law uh, 7600 that was um, created in um, 1996. And um, in our educational system, we have everything written down on paper. And we have plans. Um, we have uh, ways to do things. The problem right now, it is not what we have. It is the attitude people might have, especially parents and some uh, teachers. Because parents think that when a person has a, a learning accommodation, a testing accommodation, that means that the person doesn't have to do anything else, that the person has to be promoted to the following level. And sometimes teachers don't do the, the, right, the, the work the right way. And by the end of the year, they don't have all the, all the paperwork they need to be able to, to tell the, 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 the father, the mother, uh, that the child has to take the same level again. And therefore, it is easier to promote the student to the next level. So I think it is, um, it is a problem of attitude. The educational system has addressed um, the, the subject the right way. But we still have to improve our attitudes. Okay. Um, as you know, English teachers don't usually have training, right? Are not prepared to deal with these kind of special needs in the classroom. Uh, what learning disabilities are more difficult to observe in the language class? In the language class, it is difficult to, to detect specific learning disabilities because the student who has a specific learning disability is usually quiet. The person doesn't bother the teacher in class and the student seems to be paying attention to, to the teacher all the time. And the teacher might think the student is the role model in the class, that that's the student he wants to teach or she wants to teach. But the, the, the story behind is, is totally different. The student might, be, might not be understanding, the student might not be learning, and the student is quiet because he or she doesn't understand. And sometimes th those problems go by undetected. So, would you suggest that a student in class that is extremely quiet and that seems to be paying attention is the one you should start probably asking more questions, checking if she or he is understanding what you said? Those students have to be included in every single activity. Do not think that the student is doing well just because the student is quiet and doesn't make any noise in class. Because usually teachers pay attention to the student who's making noise and they say that's the, the hyperactive student in class. And that's the one they want to be paying attention to all the time. So what you have to do is really include those students that are quiet, those students that seem to be understanding, but may, maybe not. And uh, to do that, you have to assess their needs. You have to de design different ways of testing to see how the student is doing in class. Okay, that's probably linked, your, your answer was probably into what I was going to ask um, then. It says, what strategies teachers can use to accompany students with learning disabilities to make the class more inclusive? Like, let's refer to the moment you know a specific um, disorder or a specific um, symptom, let's say. Mm -hmm. How would you address those specific, those specific needs? concerning um, the practices in the language class? Mm -hmm. Well, when you, know, when you know exactly what the situation is all about, what problem the student might, might be facing, what disability the student has, then it is easier to 
work with that student. But sometimes you do not know exactly what's going on in the class. So you have to start working on that since the very beginning of the, of the, of the term. And how do you do that? You have to use different instruments to assess your student's need. You have to find out about, about learning styles. You have, you have to find out about multiple intelligences in the class. And once you know the needs that you have in class, then you can start designing your, your, your activities, your programs, everything you are going to do in class. Mostly, uh, we like to do things um, in class by using the board, by using books. And sometimes we don't want to, to do activities that are dynamic, that, uh, in, in which the students have to stand up and walk around and try to talk with others. But you have to do all that, you know, you have to take, take it to, into account your students that are visual, that are auditory, and that are tactile. But to do that, you have to assess your students since the very beginning. Okay. You referred to students' mediation, but you also mentioned assessment. Uh, please tell us what would be advisable in order to give students the necessary accommodations when performing during an oral or written test. Okay. That would be then testing accommodations. And um, in testing accommodations, what I usually do is I make sure the student understands the instructions. Because sometimes the students cannot solve the, the test and we think that the student doesn't know. But the real thing behind is that the student is not understanding what you want to from him in that, on that test. So you have to make sure the, the instructions, either oral or written, are very clear. Okay. And then uh, take into account that if a student has a visual problem um, or maybe he has trouble listening, hearing, because of a hearing impairment. So you have to make sure you speak loud and clear uh, when, when you're asking oral questions. And we, when the tests are written, you have to make sure that the student is able to read it, that the letters are big enough. I usually use a 13 uh, size font on my tests and if I have a student uh, that, wear, that wears glasses then I use 14, number 14. Okay. Um, if you could, okay, let's try to summarize your presentation in a few words. My presentation today was a lot of fun. I really liked it. The students in the, in the classroom, they were very attentive and they were very cooperative paying attention to me all the time and I, I really felt uh, comfortable in the class. And then we did uh, several activities. Um, the first one was, um, was a game, but at the same time they were studying um, some um, important information related to the history of special education in, the, in, the, in Costa Rica. And um, that took us about 30 minutes and they had to communicate they had to walk around. And then we studied uh, vocabulary related to special ed to pronounce those, those uh, words that are related to, to um, diseases or sicknesses that cause um, disabilities uh, and make sure that the, student, the, the teachers know how to pronounce them correctly, that they know how to say learning accommodations, testing accommodations, and, and many other words that we studied in class. And then we, they actually had to assess themselves by using, using two instruments that I actually recommended them to use them in, in their classes. And one of them is about, was about multiple intelligences and the other one was about um, learning styles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank and it was, you. It was really a great experience. I am very happy and satisfied with the experience. Okay, thank you so much for sharing with us today about the topic of special education in thank the language you. classroom. And thank you for your attention.